guess what? Dogs can walk and run on treadmills. I'm gonna teach you how to do it today. Now, if what I'm saying makes sense to you and you find this information helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can see what we're doing in the future. All right, so first step in teaching the dog how to walk on the treadmill is just getting on the treadmill. So a lot of dogs are kind of nervous about this. I mean, I gotta believe that, you know, this is kind of weird for people, much less dogs. If the ground starts to move under your feet, it's a little scary. Now, Argus is not a crazy fearful dog at all. He's fairly confident. And his type of dog, like these big heavy pit bulls, sometimes the bigger, larger breeds are a little bit harder, but these kind of guys normally are pretty natural at the treadmill. They kind of get up and go fairly easily. But the first thing I want to do, now I'm standing on one treadmill, but I'm going to put him on the second treadmill. So the first thing I want to do is just have him come to the treadmill. And just stand on the treadmill. I just want to kind of make it a positive thing. Because we're going to turn it on in a moment. It's going to go really slow in the beginning. And then I'm just going to kind of guide his head. Now, I love the treadmills. If you don't have a dog treadmill and you have a regular treadmill, I love the ones that have the bar here because we're going to use the leash for a while. You can teach the dog to be off leash on the treadmill after a handful of sessions, but in the beginning, we want to use the leash to control them. Okay, now we want to be real careful if the dog gets upset and starts fighting and flailing around that we really take the time to slow down. Remember the concept of it takes the time that it takes so that we don't choke them, okay? Um, I know prong collars can be rather controversial. I do use them on occasion, and many times the treadmill is one of the places that I use them because you are not gonna choke the dog. The pressure of the prongs is actually broken up, so you don't choke the dog. And so in this case, it is a positive, not a negative. Okay. So the first thing I wanna do is just get him up here. And then I might ask him to step off. We don't turn it on right away. All right, the concept of don't just go to work. Don't just put them on the treadmill and turn the treadmill on. Let's make the treadmill a little familiar first. Okay, okay and then come back to the treadmill. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll say do this a few times. Okay, so this time I'm gonna face him in the right orientation. Okay, here. Now I'm gonna kind of center him here. This is where I want his head. His head and his shoulders should be right here. And when I hit the start button, let's just kind of watch how he feels about it. And I'm gonna work on keeping him right here. Give him a little education. Yeah, he hears the beep. He's like, whoa, what is that? Okay, so we're gonna center him up. Mm -hmm. He jumps off, just gonna put him gently back on. And I can stand here to kind of keep him on too. Just let him figure it out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so once they start doing this, when he's looking forward and cooperating, I want to touch it just a little bit. So it started at 0.5. Now we're at 0.6. Just let him find his feet. That's a good boy, Argus. Good boy. Good job. So like I said, these little guys are naturals. Very good. So when he starts to hesitate toward the back, I know that he needs a tiny bit more speed. 0.7, perfect. Now some treadmills are at one mile an hour when you first turn it on. I would recommend hitting your start button and then cranking it down to 0.5 so it's not so fast. All right, this is lovely. And you see, we're nice and loose. He's doing it, he's a smart boy. All right, now we're at 0.8. I do not want him running or jogging. I want a nice, leisurely pace to begin with. All right, once he's walking and I see he's doing well, I'm not gonna leave him yet. I'm still standing next to him. All right, but then we're gonna do a little safety knot here. I'm not gonna just tie a knot because if he starts having a moment, I wanna be able to remove him safely. So we're just gonna do a little half of a knot. And this doesn't matter if you have a nylon leash, a leather leash, or one of my little slip leashes. It should be loose, not tight, nice and loose. And I can pull this right off, okay? But one of the first distractions that Argus has to learn to deal with is me stepping off of this treadmill. And that may make him have a little boop, boop, boop moment. And then I wanna be able to assist him in staying right here. Okay, so I'm gonna step off. Oh, he did very well. 
perfect. And in these first couple of few sessions, if he puts his feet up here, that tells me he needs a little bit more speed. So now we're at point nine. I want to have the speed as such to where he's not struggling, but he can't put his feet on the front so easily, but he's not struggling to the back. It's finding this little sweet spot. This is pretty nice. Later, as we get better, they can learn to be off leash. They can learn to go at higher paces. But this is the very beginning. This is really good. All right, so we have been on now for three minutes and 37 seconds. We'll turn him off as long as he's doing well. We're gonna turn it off at about four minutes. Because remember, you wanna end things when they're doing really well. Always end on a positive note. Ending positively will make it easier for him coming back up, although he's doing super well. All right, so I'm gonna hit the stop button. Now, just because it stops does not mean we can jump off. So this is teaching him patience. So he has to wait for me to untie the leash. And he should be waiting for me. If he doesn't, I just remind him to stay here. Mm -hmm. Just let, let everything go in a little bit. Don't be in a hurry. That was kind of a big deal for him. Right, and then I just invite him off. And that was really nice. Very nice. That was a good boy. All right. So a couple of things about the treadmill to think about. Treadmills do not replace your walk. You can't use this for total exercise all the time. You know, I don't know about you, but I get bored as heck on a treadmill. I don't want to look at a wall or look at nothing. I'd rather be outside walking. but. There are times either the weather's insanely hot or it's pouring down rain all day or you got three feet of snow. I don't know, something, you know, sometimes we have things or maybe you have a reactive dog who out on the walks initially and you want to get them a bit tired before you go on your walks, also a great option. So it's very versatile, but don't replace your walks with a treadmill. They need to get out in nature. You need to get out in nature. They need adventures, new places to smell and explore and all this sort of thing. So the treadmill is only a supplement to our walks. And I want you to think about it that way, not a replacement for our walks. You could also use uh, backpacks, all sorts of things to intensify the exercise on the walks and on the treadmill. All right, so be careful. Make sure you're not choking. Um, give it a shot. Leave me a comment. Ask questions. Next time.